Howdy, my name is Ben and or a bookish bear um, and I am coming out of retirement to talk about gay books. So you're welcome internet. Just put your paws up because you were born this way baby. I haven't made a video in a long time and that's fine. But since December uh, of last year I have amassed sort of a large stack of queer books. It's June so it's Pride Month. I figured everyone loves a good queer slash gay uh, recommendation video so I decided to just talk about all these books so here we go I'm just gonna start because it's a lot and I don't want this to be super long so uh, first I'm gonna start with what I'm currently reading which is uh, I started this the pink line by Mark Geweiser Geweiser I can't say names. It's fine. So this is an exploration of how the conversation around sexual orientation and gender identity has come to describe and divide the world in an entirely new way over the first two decades of the 21st century. Uh, I'm not too far in, but it's, it's great so far. I think it, this is a really good pride read if you're just going to read one because it is going to give you a perspective from a bunch of different kinds of queer people. Um from all over the world. Uh, the other thing that I am reading, and I'm almost halfway through, I just started it last night or the night before, uh, which is Box Hill by Adam Mars Jones. Uh, this one's been talked about a lot, I think, and uh, it's just about this 18-year-old guy who gets into this relationship with this biker, and it's really good. I'm enjoying it so far. It's interesting because this one is... Uh, there is some explicit sexual stuff in it, but it also is, the prose is just this very sort of buttoned up, matter of fact, sort of British prose that is interesting. That's an interesting juxtaposition. Um, but maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So, but it's good and I recommend it if you're okay, dude. The next one is one I just finished, uh, which is 100 Boyfriends by uh, Brontes Purnell. I'm so bad about authors' names. But yeah, this is uh, really great as well. It's sort of a, a bunch of short vignettes about uh, different gay men and the, the men they're sleeping with and having relationships with. If you're looking for something as a gay man that is own voices, um, I think that this is, it felt to me super authentic and deeply raw and truthful about what it is like to be a gay man and uh, the relationships and sexual and otherwise that uh, gay men have. Uh, it, it It's really good and I highly recommend it. It's also very sort of explicit, so I don't know. Some people are not into that. And the next few I want to talk about are, uh, I'm going to go through pretty quickly because they, um, anyone who's been watching BookTube stuff over the past few months has probably already heard of all of these because they, I found them through the Booker International uh, long list and short list maybe. I don't remember which ones were short listed. Uh, the first is After the Sun, which I finished. That's a lot of glare going on. Uh, After the Sun by Jonas Aka. And this, I, I fucking love this book. Uh, I don't even know how to say how much I love this book. If you know of any other authors or books that are similar to this book, please leave it in the comments because I would love to read it and try it. It's just really weird. Uh, super queer. I, I loved everything about this book, so... I know a lot of people did not, but I did. It's short stories, by the way. Um, the next is Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park. And this I actually started, and I thought I was in the mood for, like, the 20-something who's a, who's a mess and, like, that kind of vibe and novel. But I re wasn't really. So I haven't read a ton of this. Um, I'm not sure when or if I will finish it. I, I didn't dislike it so much as just it wasn't really resonating with me at the moment so um but it's it's 
That's fine. That's fine. And the, lastly, Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Paso Ruby. These are both all translated as well. Um, and this is short stories. I read, I think, three or four and then just sort of abandoned it. I, I'm not sure why because I wasn't disliking the stories. I just, again, wasn't resonating. Uh, so I'll probably go back and finish these later. Finally, this is a stack of books that I, well, not finally, because there are two more stacks, so you're welcome, internet. Um, this is a stack of stuff that I have recently acquired. Um, this is one of the more recent ones, My Love is a Beast, uh, by Alexander Chavez. Sheets? Chavez? Makes more sense. Anyways, uh, this one is a memoir, um, I think also pretty sexually explicit, uh, a gay male, um, and I'm super excited to read it. I will probably read this next. Um, I've heard just tons of great things about it. It, uh, from what I've read about it, and I've read a few pages when I first got it, um, it does give me sort of 100 boyfriend vibes, so I don't know, maybe this is good, a good pairing for uh, a gay dude for Pride Month. I don't know, but I'm excited about this to read. Uh, the next is Limbic, which is poems by Peter uh, Scalpello. I some folks were sh uh, posting the poems and stuff on Instagram, and I just needed a copy um, after reading a few of them. So I haven't really gotten into it yet. I've read through a few, kind of flipped through it, but uh, it's. Uh, it's very promising, and I I don't read a lot of poetry anymore, uh, which is kind of dumb. But so, I'm excited to read this. It's from a small press called Cipher Press in the UK, um, who does a, a lot, if not all, queer stuff. Um, and I also got from them uh, Unreal Sex, which is a a collection of short stories. Uh, these stories are deliciously strange, deranged, and at times ruthlessly funny. Um, a mesmeric mixture of horror, fantasy, and eroticism. Um, all of that sounds up my alley. I'm a huge horror fan, and I'm into weird, queer stories. So, yeah, maybe I'll read a few of these this this month. They go well together. They're so pretty and, I don't know, that's fun. And this is Liarmouth, uh, John Waters' first novel. I'm a big John Waters fan. Really interested to see what he does in the novel format. Um, I haven't heard a lot about it from anybody. Uh, I, I kind of freaked out. I found out, out about it maybe like a couple days before it was released. I don't know how I never heard about it before that, but uh, people weren't freaking out the amount that I thought they should about a novel from John Waters because like, why wouldn't you freak out in a good way about that? But, uh, it's here, and it's queer, and, uh, hopefully I'll get to this soon. I don't, who knows? I realize a lot of this is, like, gay male. I'm a gay male, so, um, I thought there was going to be more variety, but there isn't, so I'm sorry. Uh, everybody else in the queer community. Uh, so the rest of these are stuff that I have accumulated... So the rest of these are uh, books that I have accumulated since December. Most of them I got for either Christmas or my birthday, which is in February. So um, let's do this real quick. So this is Wayne uh, Kostenbaum, called My 1980s and Other Essays. I read a his collection of essays called Figure It Out, and it, it's... He's just really smart and uh, interesting, and I'm excited to read this. The next is called The Velvet Rage by Alan Downs. He's a PhD, apparently. Uh, Overcoming the pain of growing up gay in a straight man's world. I was more interested in this <laughs> at some point, and then I got it for Christmas, I believe. Um, but it sounds interesting. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot about masculinity and what that means and how the gays are uh, not great at it. Who knows? 
we'll see. Uh, this is, I just got this, I say I just got it, it's February for my birthday, Middle Row Queer, Christopher, uh, Christopher Isherwood in America by Jamie Harker. I love Christopher Isherwood, uh, A Single Man is my favorite book of all time, and I've read it just so many times. And I guess this is about when he moved to America and uh, his time here. Uh, I believe he lived here until he died. Don't quote me on that. Uh, look it up on Wikipedia. But I'm excited to read this because it's uh, interesting to read about people that you admire. Uh, this is Between Men by Eve Kosofsky Zedwick. Oh, and Wayne Kostenbaum, this is probably how I heard of this book. He wrote the foreword. So, English Literature and Male Homosexual Desire. Uh, I think this is about um, possibly the collaboration between... Uh, let's see. It was first published in 1985. It's a Decisive Intervention in Gender Studies, a book that all but single-handedly dislodged a tradition of literary... Li Literary critique that suppressed queer subjects and subjectives. Huh. Okay. So I guess it's about how all books are gay. And, uh, surprise, all books are gay. That's hyperbole. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to read this. Uh, oh, this last one is called Faggots by Larry Kramer. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on... You know, gay rights. I can say whatever I want, right? On YouTube, it's fine. Uh, by Larry Kramer, this is a uh, sort of quintessential, important, classic gay literature moment. I just realized that I plan to do a whole, like, category is thing for d all the different categories I was doing. Because ballroom, you know? But I forgot to do that. So just imagine that I did like a funny and um, witty category is butch queen realness, whatever, for uh, all these books. You're welcome, Internet. Yeah, so this is supposed to be pretty important as far as gay literature goes, gay male literature. And uh, I need to read it. So just going to hold this up. For the rest of the video so that that'll be the thumbnail so everyone is super uncomfortable the whole time anyway that's my list of uh gay books that i have amassed and uh need to read for pride and to make my community proud and to um, be a good gay reader Hopefully there's something on here that you will enjoy. If there are books that you would like to recommend that are similar to these, please let me know. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. I like reading books about books. <laughs> uh,